So, here's my opinion on the Shrey Tomahawk that they kindly sent me for review. The model is SCAXE4, or SAX4, if you will. <laughs> hey, what's wrong with a bit of immature humor every now and then? So, this is a Tomahawk that you can find for $40. It has been pretty much exactly 40 bucks everywhere I looked. It is made of 3CR13 stainless steel. And uh, this is also my main complaint. Because 3CR13 is a low-end steel. It is cheap, it is pretty soft compared to other steels. It's just not a great performer. It has slightly higher wear resistance than 420J2, but otherwise it's pretty similar to it and 420J2 is generally considered to be, well, a cheapo steel in the negative sense of the term. I can kind of see why you would choose a softer steel on, a, on, on an axe or tomahawk simply because it's a tool that you usually use pretty roughly. The edge could chip if it's too hard, especially if you strike rocks with it, which I did in my testing. Among other things, I tested some throwing. And since I'm not all that good at axe throwing yet, I definitely had some botched throws where it landed pretty harshly, you know, impacted the wood at a bad angle, or skidded over some rocks, or in one case it even straight on hit a rock, which, yeah, that is of course not good for the blade whatsoever. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it did stand up to all the, the use pretty well. It has, in fact, not shipped. There is some wear and some minor damage on the edge, but, you know, considering the abuse, it's really not bad. However, the thing is you could also get uh, very, you know, sturdy, wear-resistant, higher quality steel. And personally, I'd rather pay a bit more for it than this. That's just, uh, before I get too much into that, uh, let's just take a quick look at the handle. It's a nylon fiber handle. The uh, axe appears to be made of one piece. Although, as far as I can tell, it is prob the head is probably welded on to the rest. It's not too easy to see, but you can see here, it's uh, the head right there. And uh, then you have the steel core of the handle there. And then on top of it, you have the nylon fiber. The wrapping looks different than the one that usually comes with it. I re-wrapped it myself because it was not well attached at all. It actually came loose from just handling it <laughs> before I even had a chance to use it. The uh, wrapping already came loose and I just took it off and I tested it without to see how well that works and didn't have a problem with it. The uh, handle works quite well. I noticed that if you're not using it with the paracord, the grooves come in pretty handy because they offer very good traction. And uh, even though the handle is straight, so it's not really ergonomic design, but uh, I mean, just in terms of the basic shape, but it, apparently it doesn't have to because my hand didn't slip down much when I used it like that. I definitely noticed that if you're not using a, uh, the, the um, paracord wrapping. It is definitely more comfortable with gloves, but uh, that's to be expected. With the wrapping, it feels pretty good. So that's quite nice. And uh, you can thread it through the hole here at the end to make a lanyard, which uh, again, is a pretty good idea. Prevents it from slipping down too much. So that works quite well. As far as the overall design is concerned, I quite like it. I'm very much fond of the shape. It, uh, it's practical and it looks very nice as well. Uh, the, the spike, I guess, is debatable because, well, especially if you're out camping, survival, whatever, outdoors use, a spike doesn't really come in handy in, in a lot of situations. 
I personally think that a hammer is more useful. The spike, well, what could you do with it? You could do, use it to break down a door, I guess, if you had to, you know, punch a hole into something. Uh, if you happen to run across a hostile armored knight in the woods and you have to fight him, yeah, that's uh, definitely a useful armor piercing. Uh, point there, but uh, other than that, not too many situations in which I can see it come in handy. It is, of course, nice to have it for versatility because it is, of course, considerably different in effect from the main chopping edge. But uh, yeah, whether you prefer spike or hammer, that's up to you ultimately. One thing that kind of bothers me about the edge is that it has the usual problem that you see on many axes and tomahawks, that it is very thick. It is not a very fine edge grind, which again, I get it, it's an axe. But even so, I think that's even for an axe or hawk that is a bit too thick in my opinion. Of course, it's now worn down a little more, but even so, you can see that it's just a bit too thick. It would be pretty hard to get a good sharp edge on there. You're never going to get it all that sharp. And then the problem is that the, uh, the steel doesn't have all that good edge retention to begin with. So the thing is this, as far as I see it, this is a tank of an axe or hawk. It really is. It is super durable. You can really put it through all kinds of abuse and it's not gonna be damaged in any significant way. It really is, well, yeah, like I said, a tank. So it is extremely durable and sturdy. No problem with that. Even when you're throwing it the way I did, which is pretty rough, the uh, nylon fiber here, yeah, it, it did get some damage, but considering what it, what it has been through, it's really minor damage. So yeah, it is an extremely tough tool and it's also well designed. The only problem is really that it doesn't perform as well for cutting and chopping simply because the sharpness isn't really there. And that is that can actually also be a safety concern because if the, uh, if the edge is or becomes so dull that it just doesn't bite into the wood anymore but slips off or glances off, then yeah, it can actually be a hazard to the user. So that is a bit of a concern. I don't like to compare one brand with another in a particular review. I prefer to look at, an, at a product in and of itself on its own terms. But in this case, I think it's pretty relevant to do the comparison because you can have this here for $45, which is made of 1055 carbon steel. 1055 is dramatically superior in quality to 3CR13, yet this only costs five bucks more. Again, of course I get it, it's a wood handle as opposed to you know, all steel and nylon fiber and, and everything. Uh, yeah, I get all that, but even so, it's, you just get a lot more bang for your buck, I feel. Um, finally, let me just talk about the sheath. The sheath is, well, definitely functional. It's the kind of thing where I would say that, yep, it works. It's, uh, it doesn't blow me away. There are no you know, particularly outstanding features about it, but it works. It's, it's a good design and it's, it's well made, it's sturdy. So that's quite good. So slides on like that, has snap buttons there, uh, has a belt strip here, or belt loop, I should say. So yeah, the sheath is really quite nice, it does its job, it's uh, nice and sturdy nylon, pretty thick. So yeah, definitely does the trick, I like it. Again, nothing mind-blowing, but it is good quality. As you can tell, my main problem with this is really the choice of material. This could be a really, really outstanding tomahawk if not for the poor quality material. You know, it really bugs me because based on just the design, the overall shape and the functionality of the design, I would really want to recommend it. But seeing that it is such cheap low-end steel, 
I can really only recommend it as a tough beater type of, you know, Toma tank, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. But if you're looking for more performance, you know, better cutting ability and, and things of that nature, better edge retention, then it's not the thing I would recommend. So I hope that helped and thanks for watching.